O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me.
A reading from 2 Samuel, chapter 7. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house, that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come, and this is instruction for mankind, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have brought about all this greatness to make your servant know it. Therefore you are great, O Lord God. For there is none like you, and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people, Israel, the one nation on earth whom God went to redeem to be his people, making himself a name and doing for them great and awesome things by driving out before your people whom you redeemed for yourself from Egypt and nation and its gods. And you established for yourself your people Israel to be your people forever. And you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, confirm forever the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house. And do as you have spoken. And your name will be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel and the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Yesterday we celebrated the presentation of our Lord. We heard how the infant Christ, the Lord's salvation, came into his temple as the new and living temple, as an eternal, forever temple, we could say. This wasn't a triumphal entry like the one we hear about at the beginning of Advent or Holy Week. Yet like it, Jesus came humbly yesterday in swaddling clothes, nestled in his mother's bosom, cuddled in the arms of ancient Simeon. The Holy Family came with sacrifices according to the law, a portent that Christ would offer himself as the once for all sacrifice on the cross for sins. And we heard Simeon pray, a prayer that is now our prayer. 
from the text before us from 2 Samuel, we also overhear King David praying. But what is the context of this prayer? We hear the magnificent words, but why did David offer it up? And what does it mean for us? Is it also our prayer in some sense? Earlier in chapter 7, after he had brought the Ark of the Covenant up to Jerusalem, David proposed in his heart to build a dwelling, a permanent dwelling for the Lord, to house the gracious presence of Yahweh in the midst of his people. At first, the prophet Naaman was exuberated and very encouraging, saying, Go, do all that is in your heart, for Yahweh is with you. But God had other plans. It was not warring David who would build a house for the Lord, but David's son Solomon, whose name means peace. We know from elsewhere in Scripture that David collected a great many costly materials from throughout the kingdom and from the surrounding regions in order that all would be in readiness for this temple. And even though David would not have the honor of building a house for Yahweh, the Lord would honor him in another way and with an even greater honor. Two verses before our text, David hears through the prophet Naaman, Nathan, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is not a mere promise that a son will be born to David to build the house for Yahweh's name, nor of an earthly longevity for David's dynasty. No, this is, as Andrew Steinman notes in his commentary, the promise from which springs all scriptural talk about the Messiah, the Christ, being a descendant of David, as we hear it in the Psalms and the prophets in the New Testament. From David will come forth a king who shall live and reign forever, and his kingdom shall stand forever. At such great news, what can a man, any man, even a great man like David do? He prays in praise and thanksgiving. Who am I, O Lord, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet, this was a small thing in your eyes. David knows his status. He hasn't yet committed his great sin in conjunction with Bathsheba at this point, but he knows he's a sinner. He's done nothing to deserve the abundance of gifts that God pours out when he opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. And so is it also with you, dear sinner. With David, you say, what more can I say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. As if David would say, you know how unworthy I am of all this greatness, O Lord. How can I ever sufficiently thank and praise you for these undeserved gifts? And this is not because of David's or your humble beginnings. It's because without any merit or worthiness in us, since we're sinners and have absolutely no merit or worthiness of ourselves, indeed quite the opposite, despite this, it's despite this that God graciously redeemed us from the bondage of sin, a bondage far greater than what Israel suffered in Egypt when more easily he could drive us out from his presence as he drove out a nation and their false gods from before his people Israel. All the blessings you receive in your life, your body and soul, your reason and all your senses, the house and clothing that protect you from a 15 degree morning like today, your family and friends, this campus and this magnificent chapel, from which you receive God's word and gifts, and the fact that God has brought you here and these deaconesses to this point in their journey. 
All of this and so much more is a small thing in God's eyes. David heard the promise that the Messiah would descend from his loins and sit on his throne forever. And you have heard that same promise today in this house of Yahweh. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come, and this is instruction for mankind, David prays. David understands that the Lord here is promising that the Messiah would come from him and that this man would be both his seed and his Lord. That man is none other than the one whose presentation in the temple we celebrated yesterday, your Lord, your salvation. In this promised king, the Lord established for himself people, established you to be his people forever. And you, O oh Lord, became our God. For you see, because Yahweh is not satisfied with promising you the blessings of all the world, he has given you his son and blessed you with a heavenly house forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in our prayers. We give thanks to God with seminarian Alex and Abby Hinojosa at the birth of a daughter, Eleanor Elena, and with seminarian Nick and Lauren Belcher at the birth of a son, Amos Augustine. of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Heavenly Father, you sent your own Son into this world as the child of Mary. We thank you for the lives of Eleanor and Amos entrusted to our care. Bring them to the saving waters of holy baptism and grant them that precious inheritance awaiting them in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. My privilege as Director of Deaconess Formation to announce the placements of our Deaconess students, which of course can occur any time throughout the year. Uh, and so to begin, I want to thank uh, Reverend Wiley for his uh, wonderful sermon this morning. I also want to express my appreciation to the placement department and all who uh, have contributed to the placement process. Uh, especially uh, must recognize Deaconess Amy Rast. Uh, for all of her ongoing work, maybe never-ending work, and bringing these placements to fruition. And of course, we must all especially today give thanks to God 
for these calling congregations, this calling institution. Uh, and so today, as always, we pray that the Lord blesses our students, uh, these congregations, this institution, as well as their pastors, as together they now fulfill their service to Christ. Uh, today we have six deaconess placements to announce, and they are as follows. Melissa Harrington, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Indiana District. Patty Resner Miller, Village Lutheran Church, Ladue, Missouri, Missouri District. Megan Polzine, Lutheran High School Association, Mayor, Minnesota, Minnesota South District. Chelsea K. Schmeiser, Grace Lutheran Church and Zion Lutheran Church and Nimrod Lutheran Church, Sabika, Minnesota, Minnesota North District. Linda Struby, Salem Evangelical Lutheran Church, Jacksonville, Illinois, Central Illinois District. And finally, Miriam Yakimo, St. Paul Evangelical Lutheran Church of Hamburg, Whitmore Lake, Michigan, Michigan District. To conclude, let us uh, pray the Lord's blessing upon these ladies as they begin their service to the church. The Lord, whose mercies are new to us every morning, be with you and bless you. May his love for the world open your ears and enlighten your eyes to perceive the needs of your neighbor. May his compassion then fill your heart, his truth inspire your mind, and his generosity shape your will. May his words then proceed from your lips, his holiness guide your feet, and his mercy move your hands, so that the bonds of love may ever be increased in his church. Finally, may the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit sanctify you completely so that your whole life, begun, continued, and ended in him, may be pleasing in his sight. To Christ be all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you all and your service to the church. Thank you.